Today, we're diving into a beautiful relationship between the side lengths of a triangle and its area. This elegant inequality known as Weizenberg's inequality connects geometry in a surprisingly deep way. To tackle this, we need to express both the area, S, and the side lengths in terms of a common element. Let's arbitrarily choose the angle C as our bridge between these quantities. Picture a triangle where sides A and B meet at angle C. We have two powerful tools here. The area formula involving sine of C and the law of cosines, which elegantly connects the opposite side C to this same angle. All right, let's start with our original inequality and see what magic unfolds. Our strategy is to substitute C squared and the area S using the formulas involving angle C. Watch how everything starts to connect. Beautiful. After substitution, the inequality is now expressed entirely in terms of the sides A, B, and the angle C. Everything is unified under one mathematical roof. Now comes the satisfying part. Let's simplify both sides and watch the algebra dance. Combining like terms on the left and cleaning up that coefficient on the right gives us this much cleaner expression. Notice that we can divide the entire inequality by two, making things even simpler. Ah, much cleaner. This simplifies our expression significantly. To consolidate our trigonometric friends, let's move the cosine term over to the right side where it can join the sine. Perfect. This isolates a squared plus b squared on the left, giving us a clean separation. Now here's a nice observation. We can factor out a times b from the right-hand side. This reveals a much clearer structure, with that elegant combination of sine and cosine just waiting to be simplified further. Now here comes the key insight. That expression in parentheses is a linear combination of sine and cosine. And whenever you see this pattern, there's a beautiful simplification waiting to happen. We can express it as a single sine function. This technique is known as the R formula, or harmonic addition theorem. It's one of those elegant tools that lets us collapse a messy sum into a single, phase-shifted trigonometric function. Mathematics at its most satisfying. For our specific expression, we have a equals 1 and b equals the square root of 3. Let's see what R turns out to be. To apply the R formula, we need to calculate R using A equals 1 and B equals the square root of 3. Let's evaluate those squares under the square root. 1 squared gives us 1. The square of square root of 3 gives us 3. So we get square root of 4, which equals 2. Factoring out the 2 reveals something beautiful. Those coefficients are familiar trigonometric values that any trig student would recognize. One half is exactly sine of 30 degrees, and square root of 3 over 2 is cosine of 30 degrees. These are the classic 30-60-90 triangle ratios. Substituting these values reveals an incredibly familiar pattern that should make any trigonometry lover smile. This is exactly the sine angle addition formula. Sine of A cosine of B plus cosine of A sine of B equals sine of a plus b. So our entire expression collapses beautifully into two times sine of c plus 30 degrees. All that complexity reduced to this elegant form. Now comes the moment of truth. Let's substitute this beautifully simplified form back into our main inequality. Our inequality transforms into a squared plus b. Squared is greater than or equal to 2ab times sine of c plus 30 degrees. We're getting close to the finish line. To seal the deal, we need two fundamental mathematical truths. First, sine never exceeds one. It's bounded above. Second, the AMGM inequality tells us that A squared plus B squared is always at least 2AB. These are the building blocks that make our proof rock solid. This creates an unbreakable logical chain. A squared plus B squared is at least 2AB. And since sine of C plus 30 degrees can exceed 1, 2AB is at least 2AB times that sine value. The chain holds, and our inequality is proven. Now here's an interesting question. When does equality actually hold? For that to happen, every single inequality in our chain must become an equality. Let's see what conditions that requires. Our first condition comes from the AMGM inequality. 
We need a squared plus b squared to equal exactly 2ab. Let's rearrange this by moving the 2ab term to the left side. Ah, this gives us a beautifully familiar quadratic structure that should ring some bells. The left side is a perfect square trinomial, one of those elegant algebraic patterns that factors so nicely. It factors into a minus b, all squared. Since a square can only equal zero when its base is zero, we need a minus b to be zero. In other words, a must equal b. Our second condition requires the sine function to hit its maximum value of 1. But remember, we're dealing with angles in a triangle, so we need to be careful about which angles are actually possible. Here's the key constraint. C is an angle in a triangle, so it lives between 0 and 180 degrees. This means C plus 30 degrees must be between 30 and 210 degrees. And within this specific range, there's exactly one angle whose sine equals 1. That special angle is 90 degrees, which means C must be 60 degrees. Things are coming together beautifully. So we have a triangle where two sides are equal, A equals B, and the angle between them is 60 degrees. That's the definition of an equilateral triangle. And since our choice of angle C was completely arbitrary, this symmetry applies everywhere. Equality holds if and only if we have a perfectly equilateral triangle. Let's do a quick sanity check with an equilateral triangle to make sure everything works out as expected. For an equilateral triangle with side length a, the area s is a squared times square root of 3, all divided by 4. Plugging these values into our original inequality gives us this expression. Now, let's clean up both sides and see if we get the equality we expect. The left side gives us 3a squared. On the right, those 4s cancel out nicely. Now, we simplify this product of square roots, which should give us something familiar. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3, giving us 3a squared equals 3a squared. Perfect equality. Our theory checks out beautifully. And there we have it. Weizenberg's inequality in all its geometric glory. We've seen how trigonometry, algebra, and geometry interweave to create this beautiful relationship. If you enjoyed this exploration of mathematical connections, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing for more deep dives into the elegant world of mathematics. Until next time, keep questioning and keep discovering.